Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to our uh, AI driven SD1 configuration guide uh, series of videos. Uh, this is going to be um, uh, section one of part one, which is the overview part. And in this segment, we'll discuss network topology uh, and address uh, scheme. If we look at uh, a typical hub and spoke topology, uh, in this example, I'll be showing uh, three sites, uh, one, two, three, um, designated as our spokes, and we'll have uh, two hubs, hub A and hub B. Uh, and we also have an underlay network. In this case, uh, we can imagine these spokes are connected to uh, service provider networks with two uh, physical links, um, the ISP, ISP1 and ISP2. And there might be an MPLS network or an INET network, internet network, it doesn't really matter. But I mean, in this example, uh, the emphasis is that we have uh, two separate uh, physical links and there's going to be an overlay network using an auto vpn ipsec tunnels uh, that are going to be built uh, by mist uh, automation uh, that is connecting uh, these spokes to uh, the hubs um, in the mist solution we can have uh, multiple hubs it's not limited to two hubs in this example i'm just showing a high level topology of hub a and hub b uh, but you may have uh, multiple hubs as an example if you have two hubs in your headquarters and maybe an additional hub uh, deployed in a cloud provider uh, that is supported as well. If we look at a uh, high level uh, topology, um, just for uh, simplification, I have uh, chosen to um, go with hub one only or hub A um, that's going to be, I think, uh, you know, you'll be able to better understand how to configure the different NAT use cases, as I've mentioned uh, before, but really uh, a hub, uh, an additional hub or two more hubs, um, it's, it's the same. It's just uh, deploying an additional IPsec tunnels uh, and replicating the policies uh, to hub B. So um, in my uh, topology, I'm going to have uh, five different uh, hosts uh, emulating different prefixes or different LAN prefixes in each and every site. And here's an example. You can see LAN 0, LAN 1, 2, 3. Uh, in fact, in LAN 3, um, I'm showing two separate host devices connected through a layer to switch. Um, and this is going to be used for a destination not use cases, as I'll discuss in a few, uh, few videos. Um, in, in in section in part two on the hub we'll have a uh, very similar uh, topology with up to four uh, hosts uh, LAN 0, 1, 2 and 3 uh, just uh, so it would be easier for us to emulate different uh, use cases and, and traffic patterns uh, between hub and spoke or spoke to hub and we're obviously going to have the same in uh, site 2 and site 3 because these are going to be uh, replicated uh, sites so LAN0 uh, is going to be used um, as uh, our distinct IPs uh, in every site, including uh, in uh, hub A. So for an example, um, you know, these are uh, slash 24 uh, segments, but um, in site 1, uh, LAN0 is going to be 1001, which stands for site 1, the third octet. Uh, dot one um, 254 is going to be our uh, default gateway which is the IP on the uh, spoke interface site 2 1002 uh, site 3 1003 and on the hub uh, the IP will be 10101 uh, and again 254 is uh, on uh, the hub um, uh, interface uh, once we'll get to the lab topology detailed topology you'll see uh, the entire uh, addresses in each and every interface LAN 1, I'm going to be using uh, to emulate a use case where I have overlapping IP in each and every site. So for an example, site 1, I have 10.168.1.1, uh, this, this host, and I have the same IP in site uh, 2, 3, and so on. Um, on the hub side, there's a 1, 192.168.100.1. So obviously, when spokes uh, LAN 1 on the spoke side, uh, we'll be communicating, uh, sending traffic towards uh, LAN 1 of Hub A. 
uh, we will need to source not uh, on the spoke. Uh, so the return traffic will be returned to uh, the right destination. So that's going to be used to emulate or, or to show you how you configure how to configure source not um, uh, from the overlay in network. And by the way, um, in, in this uh, example here, you don't see the underlay network. Uh, imagine the overlay VPN is in um, just a schematic that I uh, that I included here, but actually it's going to be an IPsec tunnels that are connecting these spokes and uh, to the hub. LAN two uh, is where we'll be showing uh, a use case where we use static NAT. Uh, these are not overlapping IPs. Uh, however, uh, there is a requirement uh, as an example that every IP on the spoke side, every host, and as an example, if you take site one LAN two, 1020.1.1, uh, it would need to be uh, statically NATed to a different IP, 172.20, uh, prefix uh, because uh, the 172.20 is the only uh, routable uh, IP uh, on the hub site. So uh, similarly 10.20.2.1 uh, which is again different IP than site 1 would also need to be uh, statically natted to a 172.20 uh, segment uh, before it is sent uh, using the overlay network to the hub. And LAN3, um, I'm going to be showing um, or using to show uh, an overlapping IP use case where uh, these IPs traffic from uh, spoke to hub, uh, for example, 103001. Uh, traffic is originated from uh, uh, host one, LAN3 on site one, going uh, to 172.30 would need to be uh, source knotted. But on the other hand, uh, when hub A LAN 3 would like to access or uh, the, origin, the originating traffic is actually from hub A, would like to access each uh, and every host on the spoke side, we would need to destination that uh, on the spoke uh, using a specific uh, port uh, to hit the right uh, host on the spoke which we'll dive in more details in the next few slides. If we look uh, just uh, quickly on the underlay uh, topology, so, you know, as, as we have discussed previously, there's, uh, let's say, the example here, we have two uh, physical links uh, in each and every spoke and on the hub, and we have two ISPs. Obviously, they might be connected uh, between them if it's an internet uh, connectivity, not necessarily MPLS private network. Uh, but I also included um, an emulation for a remote site, let's say, um, uh, that I have only one um, VM or uh, host uh, on 172.16.99 uh, that I'll be using to show uh, a destination not uh, from the underlay network uh, reaching, um, you know, uh, one of the LAN segments on the hub. So this is a typical use case where you have some workloads or a web server that is deployed uh, on the hub LAN side that uh, you would like to, um, um, you know, uh, have access uh, from the internet or uh, from uh, specific IPs. So with that, uh, see you in the next segment where we'll dive into more details behind uh, each and every uh, use case and uh, traffic flow. Um, and I'll explain uh, how to configure each one of these use cases.